When soil begins to fail, most gardeners immediately look at the usual suspects, lack of nutrients, poor drainage, pests, or disease. But often the most silent and destructive force in the garden goes completely unnoticed. It's not visible at first glance, and it doesn't leave behind chewed leaves or yellowing stems. This hidden enemy works beneath your feet and strangles life from the soil day by day. The culprit, soil compaction. Soil compaction is one of the most underestimated threats to garden health. Whether you're growing in raised beds, containers, or a backyard plot, compacted soil limits everything your plants need to thrive, airflow, drainage, root expansion, and microbial activity. It slowly turns your once living soil into a dense, airless mass where even the hardiest plants begin to struggle. Understanding how it happens, and more importantly, how to fix it, could be the game changer for your entire growing season. Compacted soil develops when the pore spaces between soil particles collapse. These tiny air gaps are crucial for oxygen exchange, water infiltration, and root movement. When they disappear, the soil becomes hard, heavy, and hostile. Roots hit a wall, water pools on the surface, worms and beneficial microbes abandon the space. Over time, this creates the perfect recipe for nutrient lockout, fungal issues, and slow, stunted growth. What makes this even more frustrating is how easily it happens. Repeated foot traffic over the same path, tilling at the wrong moisture level, using heavy tools, or even simple rainfall on bare soil can lead to compaction. In urban gardens and raised beds where space is limited and soil is often overworked, this happens faster than most gardeners realize. You might find that your plants start strong in spring, but by mid-season they stall. This isn't a coincidence. It's often compaction slowly choking the system. So, how do you know if your soil is compacted? The clues are subtle but, well, pretty telling. Water may just sit on top of the soil instead of soaking in. You might notice roots are shallow or even kind of misshapen when you pull up a plant. Digging into the bed takes more effort than it really should, and when you take a shovel to it, the soil breaks off in clumps rather than crumbling gently in your hand. Earthworms, which are essential indicators of healthy soil structure, become scarce. All of these signs honestly point to soil that's suffocating beneath the surface. Now for the good news, compacted soil isn't a death sentence, it's more like a wake-up call. The best way to heal soil compaction isn't by breaking it apart with brute force, but by rebuilding its biology and structure from the ground up. Start by introducing organic material that naturally loosens soil over time. Compost, aged manure, and leaf mold are excellent, but two of the most underused and effective tools are alfalfa pellets and grass clippings. Alfalfa pellets, often used as livestock feed, are loaded with natural growth stimulants like triacontinol and have a softening effect on hard soil. When soaked and mixed into the upper layer, they feed microbes and stimulate root development, which in turn opens up pathways for water and air. They also attract earthworms, nature's own tillers, who tunnel through the compacted layers and build aeration corridors without disrupting the soil profile. Grass clippings, especially when applied fresh in thin layers, act like a green mulch that feeds microbial life and encourages the development of humus. Over time, this enriches the topsoil and creates a soft, sponge-like texture that naturally resists compaction. The secret is to apply them in moderation and alternate with drier mulch, like straw or shredded leaves, to avoid matting. The result is a layered living surface that breathes, drains, and grows stronger each season. Another effective strategy is planting cover crops with deep or fibrous roots. Crops like daikon radish, crimson clover, or even alfalfa itself send roots deep into the soil and break apart hard layers as they grow. When left to decompose in place, they leave behind channels that improve both structure and microbial access. This is especially useful in the off-season when your garden beds are otherwise empty and vulnerable to erosion and surface sealing. Perhaps the most important practice, however, is simply staying off the soil. Create designated walkways or stepping stones to prevent pressure on growing areas. Avoid working the soil when it's wet, which is when it's most vulnerable to compression. And, you know, resist the urge to over-till. While tilling may seem like a quick fix for tight soil, it often destroys fungal networks and collapses the soil structure further when done repeatedly. 
Soil compaction isn't just about poor plant performance, it's about breaking the natural life cycle beneath your garden. Healthy soil is a delicate balance of texture, biology, and breathability. When compaction sets in, you're not just limiting your plant's growth, you're shutting down the entire soil food web. But by returning to natural biological solutions like mulching with alfalfa and grass, supporting root-driven structure, and minimizing surface pressure, you give your soil and your plants a second chance. At Hydrohaven, we believe that every garden, no matter the size, can be transformed by better soil practices. Soil compaction may be silent, but it's not unstoppable. With the right habits and organic helpers, your soil can go from hardpan to humming with life in just a single growing season. The change is visible not just in plant health, but in the ease of working your garden, the smell of living earth, and the return of earthworms, fungi, and other vital players. If this guide helped you understand what's really going on beneath your plants, share it with a fellow gardener who might be battling poor soil without even realizing it. And don't forget to subscribe to Hydrohaven for more practical, soil-first gardening wisdom. Together we'll build better beds, healthier plants, and a stronger foundation, one layer at a time.